So which of the following heart sound may be a normal finding during pregnancy? Okay. So is it a fixed splitting of second heart sound? It is S3, S4 or pericardial knock. So the answer is S3. So S3 can be normally seen in children, pregnant female, athletes as well. Uh, but remember that S4 is always pathological. Okay, so this is the difference that you should remember for your exam. S3 can be seen in physiological conditions. If you have a S4, it is always pathological. Now the next question. So the true about postural hypotension. So how do you define postural hypotension? Right. So these are the options, and the correct answer is whenever you have a decrease in systolic blood pressure of at least 20 millimeters of mercury within three minutes of standing, then that is known as postural hypotension. Okay, so this question has been asked in the exam previously. Now the next thing, while measuring the blood pressure of a cardiac tamponade patient, right? So what happens in cardiac tamponade? There is an inspiratory decrease in systolic blood pressure. Fine and we also find a pulsus paradoxus. So, what is the advice that you give to the patient while you are measuring his blood pressure? Do you ask him to hold the breath? Do you ask him to you know take deep inspiration or take slow uh, you know short and slow breathing or just breathe normally? So, the answer is you ask the patient to breathe normally and then measure the blood pressure. Now moving on to the next topic from which the questions are frequently asked and that topic is cardiac murmurs. Okay? Now, the question, uh, one of the questions that has been previously asked is, what is the herbs point referred to? Right? So, you all know that we have a mitral area in the left fifth intercostal space, we have the left lower sternal area which is a tricuspid area, then you have the aortic area on the right second intercostal space, you have the uh, pulmonary area on the left uh, uh, second intercostal space, you have the new aortic area on the left third intercostal space. Right? So, you can be asked a question about these, so know them. Fine. So, this has been asked in the previous um, previous years. So, what is herbs point in cardiology referred to? So, the correct answer is herbs point refers to the neo aortic area. It is also the point where you can uh, hear the murmur of aortic regurgitation. So, it is it refers to the left third intercostal space. Now, murmur of severe aortic regurgitation when compared to mild aortic regurgitation is Fine. So, remember for all, so there are only four valvular lesions, right? Four or five valvular lesions that you have to focus on. One is aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation, mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation, right? These are the four main uh, valvular lesions that from which you can have questions. Now, for all these valvular lesions, try and remember the clinical findings that point towards a severity of that lesion and that is what has been asked in uh, this question. Okay? So, which out of this clinical finding points towards a severe AR? Now, the answer is severe AR is shorter in duration. Right? I will be telling you the other clinical findings, but just the, uh, note the right answer. The right answer is severe AR is shorter in duration. Why is that? Because with increasing severity of aortic regurgitation, you have more and more blood leaking from the aorta into the left ventricle during diastole as a result of the time, as a result of which there is less time needed for the left ventricle <coughs> and the aortic pressure equalization and that is why you will have a shorter duration of air. So, more severe the aortic regurgitation, shorter the duration of aortic regurgitation murmur and that is the right answer. Acute rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease, right? India is one of the major leaders in the incidence and prevalence of acute rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease. Hence, this is one topic that you must be very thorough with. Okay? There will be a question asked every time from this, uh, this topic. Um, so, let us see which are the questions that have been recently asked. Okay? So, a 12 year old school girl, so because rheumatic fever is a disease of school going children between the age of 5 and 15 years. So, you know uh, this is a classic example of rheumatic fever. So, 12 year old school girl from rural area was brought to you by her mother with complaints of fever, dyspnea and joint pain. Okay? So, three combinations, fever, breathing difficulty and joint pain. So, mother says that she has had similar episodes in the past, right? but now her breathing has decreased. On auscultation, you find a murmur. You suspect that the patient is ha having an acute rheumatic fever. So, the question that has been asked here is a question from the uh, Jones criteria of rheumatic fever. So, in the subsequent slide, I will be uh, you know, listing the Jones criteria 
I will not discuss in detail. What I want you to do is you know it is available in all the books, but this is one criteria that must be memorized completely. There are certain changes in the Jones criteria, right? That is what I will be highlighting in the subsequent slide. So, which of the following is not a major Jones criteria, right? So, carditis, polyarthritis, scent vitus tans, erythema nodosum. So, answer is erythema nodosum, right, uh, is not a major criteria. Now, which is incorrect about Dressler's syndrome? What is Dressler's syndrome? So, Dressler's syndrome is basically post myocardial pleuropericarditis. So, it is an autoimmune disorder okay, and um, that is frequently asked in the exam. So, I will just tell you a few points uh, about this. Remember that steroids are not the main point of treatment, I will be telling you subsequently. So, this is a normal pericardium. What happens in pericarditis is pericardium gets inflamed and it becomes thick. Okay. So, Dressler's syndrome is something that occurs 2 to 10 weeks after myocardial infarction. Uh, it may occur even following uh, injury or surgery. It occurs because of an immune response. The patient presents to with low grade fever, pleuritic and pericarditic pain. The important point to remember is it resolves spontaneously and we rarely use non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and very rarely steroids. Okay? It occurs in around 3 to 4 percent of myocardial infarction, but in the current generation it is very rare. But just know that a patient after myocardial infarction, if it presents to you with fever, Fever, pleurisy, and pericarditis, you must consider Dressler syndrome. Reassure the patient, it will respond on its own.